Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. If you need a website, go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton. Welcome to a video about a landscape photographer walking 100 miles from the top of the Isle of Skye to the very bottom. This is the second half of the walk, so if you're new here, you've missed the first 50 miles. But you can click a link in the description below and watch that. Basically, me and my mate Murray set off from the Ruahunish Peninsula, the very northern point of Skye. We encountered some serene, calm conditions, which offered up some beautiful landscape photography opportunities. We went to bed only to be awoken by gale force winds and thick fog, which also offered up some beautiful full photographic opportunities. We woke, we walked, we rested, we shot, we cooked, we slept and we woke to do it all again. And now you can join us on day four of this landscape photography and hiking adventure. Day four of the Sky Trail kind of alternate extended version that we're doing, and we're in Glen Sligerkin. And I've changed my footwear. I've gone from my trail runners to my hiking boots because the the last section of this video, so the last day, hopefully if we make it, is all off piste. There's no footpaths, there's no trails, there's no markers, there's nothing. So we have no idea of the terrain we're going to be hiking over. So I thought it'd be best to get that ankle support. And I have to say, we're probably about four miles in. And uh, yeah, boots feel great. I was worried they'd be too hard <clears throat> on my feet. And you know, I like the spongy trail runners, but no, they're working perfect. <laughs> that is a uh, First little wash that I've had in about four days. Well, yeah, four days. Oh, it feels good. So I got this uh, from B&M Bargains. It's called a spongy, and it's supposed to be mega absorbent. This is what we use to dry my tent, condensation, and things like that. But watch this. Oh, it's pretty much dried my hair <laughs> in about 15 seconds. Oh, it's a horrible material. It doesn't feel nice, but if you're going hiking, don't bring a towel, bring a spongy. So we have this uh, decent sized looking ridge that we have to get up on and you can just see the footpath over here. Once we get on top of that ridge, the views should open up. I mean, don't get me wrong. The views so far have been phenomenal, but I'm excited to see what we find when we get up on that ridge. To the uh, made it to the ridge, the high point of day four. Whew. Hard work, <laughs> but what a view! So whilst I enjoy my uh, coffee and pasta, let me just talk you through what we're looking at here. This is the black. Cooling Ridge, a famous mountaineering ridge walk here on Sky. I would love to do it, but I haven't had the opportunity to tackle it yet. And if we just continue down here, this is Loch Krusk, which is a beautiful loch. And actually, if you look over here, you can see a couple of boats moored up. They're actually in a sea loch. We're going to hike down here past these locks and around out of sight where we are going to encounter the notorious Bad Step. Looking forward to the Bad Step. Um, personally, I don't think it'll be very bad and I'm not even sure it'll be much of a step, but I haven't done much research and obviously I haven't seen it for myself, so stay tuned to see if we actually make it across the notorious, the terrifying, the one, the only, bad step. Right, so that's lunch done. We're just going to start heading down now, uh, down towards those boats and uh, towards the bad step. But I just wanted to I just wanted to give a massive shout out, a huge shout out to the bum bag. Or well, the fanny pack. 
which uh, that word means something else in the UK, so I don't like saying it. But uh, the bum bag, man, honestly, just for hiking alone, it's comfortable. It stores so much. I've got camera, XT42 lenses, chocolate bars, jelly babies, my phone. It all fits in there. It's accessible in seconds. And I can tell you why it looks pretty cool as well. If you can, uh, yeah, looks the part. But seriously, if you're doing sort of, you know, big days and you need quick access to gear, I mean, like the camera on my shoulder there, that's okay, but it gets in the way and it's a bit annoying. Um, oh, I'm because I'm on the YouTube and I do photography, I've got to carry excessive gear. Man, bum bag. Every time. Every time. Just everywhere you look, there's just lights and drama, it's incredible. Be rude not to, wouldn't it? <laughs> so after that nice refreshing dip, it looks like we are making our way around and towards the bad step. Yeah, I think I think this is the this is the bit we need to sort of traverse around. To be honest though, it really doesn't look too bad. <laughs> he says as he nearly falls over. You know, we just need to take care and oh, precaution. I'm guessing we just go follow the crack down and around. Yeah, nice. It is a bit of a, a tricky step. <laughs> Camera gear getting in the way. Oh, yeah, just the the camera gets in the way a bit. That's all. It's all right. It's quite a uh, without a big heavy rucksack. This would be a lot more fun. How's it going? All right. Oh. Ah, awkward with the bag. All in all, the bad step not so bad. Uh, a little bit of a river crossing here. <laughs> Murray decided to uh, try and take a shortcut. Didn't go too well for him. That's how you keep your boots dry. <laughs> Sorry, Murray. <laughs> See one of those on this channel. So we've just crossed Kamasunari Bay, which you can see there, beautiful bay, absolutely glorious. And we've decided as we've ascended up out of the bay and across the peninsula that we're gonna camp here because we've looked at the maps and from here there's no possible campsites we don't think for at least another five or six miles and the day is drawing to a close so what a spot what an absolute spot to pitch our tents ah just when we got to camp at the top of Kamasunari Bay I realized I'd left my tripod <laughs> right at the bottom Pretty much on the beach, so 
what would have been a relatively short day for the both of us has now turned into a much longer day for me as I have to trek more or less a mile down and even worse a mile back up and I contemplated just leaving it but A that's effectively leaving uh, rubbish which is no good B I need it you know I've got two full hard days left and the tripod is my friend helps me tell the story and helps me with my photography so um, yeah just recording this on my phone and I'm very angry at myself right now for leaving that behind Oh man, oh. Oh, I'm done, I'm done. So after running down to get the tripod, which you are now on now, I was coming back, you know, I'd been, I was tired man, I had to go down, come all the way back up, I was tired. And just as I arrived back at my stuff, ready to set up camp, all of a sudden this light, this light, oh, exploded over the mountains. Of course I couldn't quite capture it from this exact spot so I grabbed my camera and walking around or shooting it ended up halfway back down the flipping trail man because <laughs> you know everything was lighting up and I was trying to get the perspective and the composition right I didn't bring you with me I was just like oh just just dashing frantically because I knew the light wouldn't last more than five minutes oh, it was glorious I'll show you the images now, just a few, they might not have even come out, I don't know, it's just a nice moment, um, albeit frantic. So you enjoy the images, and I'll just, uh, I'll just rest my eyes for five minutes. <sighs> set up time for some lunch oh what a campsite oh my gosh what a campsite it's a bit windy it is a bit windy but after the other day on the Trottenish Ridge uh, which will have been last week's video where the tent was getting hammered by 35 40 mile an hour winds this light breeze doesn't bother me at all so yeah we should be fine So I'm sorry to say there's uh, no photography this evening. I, uh, you know, it's beautiful. Like the views are phenomenal. I'm just going to sit in my tent and stare at the views until I fall asleep. It's, it's out of this world. But in terms of photography, a good view doesn't always necessarily make for a great image. Like before when the light was hitting everything, it was all kicking off and there was drama and mood and atmosphere. Then I felt there was more opportunities for a good photo. But now I just can't piece the landscape together in a way that works for a nice composition, a nice image. So, ah, we'll just give it a miss. Um, you know, it's not as if we've been short of images on this trip and we still have a couple of days left. So I'm gonna crawl into my tent. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll go into the tent and we'll look at what we've done today in terms of the route and the mileage and then see what tomorrow and the next couple of days brings. So I'm gonna get all wrapped up in my sleeping bag and well, I guess I'll see you in there. So welcome to the tent everybody where I talk you through what we've done today for context you can see the Isle of Skye we started here in the very north and we're finishing down here in the very southern tip this red circle is where we are so today we have done 11.8 miles a relatively short day but it was leisurely we went swimming stopped for lunch stopped for snacks several times and coffee breaks so a nice easy day but the reason that we stopped here after 11.8 miles was because after this point we thought there weren't going to be any good camp spots so this track here from the Slig Sligacan Inn the Sligacan pub uh, this was beautiful comes through the Slig Glen Sligacan 
and it's a lovely footpath well maintained and you're just surrounded by stunning scenery and then you come up and over this pass here and this pass is beautiful where we stopped for lunch you've got fantastic views down to these locks here in the sea lock we then came around you got the i think we went for a swim about here and then we've got the bad step which was about here as well close to where we went swimming and a lovely walk down into Kamasunari Bay and then up to our campsite. Now let's not forget that I went back down to get my tripod and then had to come back up again. So that was a bit of a faff on. But that's what we've done so far today and we reckon that two more days and we will be at this point here. Morning everybody, I slept very well last night. Um, breakfast, yeah, muesli, and uh, a nice coffee which is currently too hot to drink. <laughs> so I'm gonna eat this, drink my coffee. Uh, see about some photography again. It's a very similar situation to what it was last night in terms of beautiful views, but uh, yeah, not a great deal in terms of composition without that dramatic light. But today, it's going to be a good day. Hopefully a big day. Lots more hiking and lots more beautiful scenery. So that's camp all packed up and we are on our way. I can't, I can't even been, begin to explain the, uh, the odds, the statistical chance of the weather being this glorious on the Isle of Skye. Not once has it rained and this is day five and it just looks like another beautiful day. So yeah, we're gonna put in the miles and see what we see. So that's five miles since leaving camp this morning. It's not been the best five miles, to be honest. Lots of road walking, bog stomping, heather bashing. Not much in the way of views. And uh, yeah, I don't know, let's hope it gets better though, because, whoa, you know, it's been beautiful so far. Yeah, you know what's even more beautiful? When you find a burger van after 10 miles of walking in the middle of nowhere. So this is the starter. Potato tatties, bacon, and egg. Mm. This is a burger with haggis and cheese. Oh my. Mm. Water, another coffee and a Biscoff cake. Oh yeah. Bacon sandwich to go. I never, ever thought I would say this, but oh my God, we are baking in the Scottish sunshine. Hottest day so far. Boy, have we felt it. Oh. We have now left the official Sky Trail, which goes up to Broadford, which isn't too far from here. So. On a normal day, we'd be finishing this evening. But instead, for some reason, I had the idea of us going all the way to the southernmost tip of sky, which is at least a day and a half, maybe more behind us. So from now on, it's uh, more or less going to be uncharted territory, very, very little footpaths, bushwhacking, and we've just been eyeballing the terrain. And yeah, it looks pretty tough. It is uh, one of the problems with uh, not having a path. Oh, yep, yep, that's, that's me in the water. Oh. 
Oh, it's a bug. You could fall in a bug and never be seen again. So we've been walking for hours now, off trail, just trying to get to the head of the lock. It's just not getting close, I mean. Ah, the GoPro's not really gonna show you, but it's grueling. This is a bit like one of those bad dreams where you, where you can see where you need to get to, but no matter how hard you try, how fast you run, how far you walk, you can never get there. You see, we're still, we're still not anywhere near the head of the lock. This might just be the worst five hours of walking I've ever done in my entire life. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the head of the lock. This is the point we have been trying to reach for the past 17 hours. So Murray and I have made it to camp and we have a beautiful spot just about 500 meters from the head of the lock that we've been struggling to get towards for most of the day. Um, fantastic camp. Now our goal when we set out on this trip was always to do the, further, the, the northernmost point of sky down to the southernmost point of sky. There is the Sky Trail which goes to Broadford and if we were doing that we'd be finished by now because Broadford isn't too far from here. And we did do the vast majority of the Sky Trail. We just tweaked it a little bit with the bad step where we went swimming and we've tweaked it a bit with this sort of end point where we are not going to Broadford but heading down the Sleet Peninsula which is the southernmost point. Uh, so that was a goal. We were hoping, we've basically got three options with this peninsula. Option one, follow the coastline essentially, but after studying the map, that would be about 55 miles. <laughs> just like, it's just, just, uh, just from looking at it, no, absolutely not. The second option was to sort of go down the middle of the peninsula, so over the high point and along, you know, very similar to what we've sort of done today. Um, and then the third option, uh, there's a, a trail and then a road and then a trail down to the end. Um, so I'll show you the map and tell you what we've decided to do. So this black track that you can see here, this is the trail. This is what we've done today. That's 20 miles. And from about this point here to this point, which is where we are now, probably took us half of the time of the entire thing. And that's probably about a quarter of the length. So we're looking at five miles that took us half of the time to do the entire thing. So this was unbelievably slow going, hard work, heather bashing, fern smashing, bog trampling, awful up, down, you couldn't walk in a straight line, it was just horrendous. I mean, you've just seen the video, you saw me whinging. Now look at this tiny section here, look at this tiny, tiny section. That is what we'd expect for most of this which is probably another 20 plus miles easily. And after this, which we considered to be a little tester to see how it felt, we decided that absolutely no way can we do that. It's, uh, it would take three or four days. So instead we've decided there's a track somewhere, there's a path that cuts across this top of the peninsula here. And then once we go along this path, it'll take us to this road. And yes, we are gonna walk the road to this point here, and then down, down, down to the southern most tip of sky. So there is still gonna be some trail, but the vast majority of tomorrow is just gonna be the road. I'm okay with that, actually. We've done some road walking, and the uh, yeah, the goal is to reach the southernmost point. So that's what we're gonna to do tomorrow, and that will mean we can complete it on time. So I've gotta I've got be done tomorrow. So that will be it. That will be the entire length of sky done. Hopefully, fingers crossed. The day's been grueling, so I'm just gonna go to bed um, and get a good night's sleep. So I'm gonna need a lot of energy tomorrow morning. So yeah, we'll see you, uh, see you then. Last day, day six, 
and it's going to be a scorcher. There is not a cloud in the sky, and this morning was freezing cold. Everything's covered in uh, moisture, dew from the uh, the cold temperatures. We have long grass to walk through, and it is very, very wet. So it's a hellish, hellish start to our day. Oh my gosh, hiking through waist high wet grass. This is probably the worst the midges have ever been. And then, uh, oh, I thought it'll be fine. We just need to get to a path. Look at this guy in his waterproofs. Look at where they are. How do you feel? Dry? Uh, well, dry and inside. But I think if I keep going, the sweat is going to be horrendous. Yeah, yeah, true. I suppose you can't win, can you? And we can't, we can't even stop. As soon as you stop, you get eaten alive. This is it. This is adventure. This is what we signed up for. So we are, we're stuck with it now. Oh, it's difficult to resist pine trees backlit by the sun in this lovely mist and fog that's lying around. Just can't, I can't stop, like, can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, I don't know. Just simple yet atmospheric shot of the pine trees. A memory of the living hell that is this morning. <laughs> The next 15 miles of this journey is by road with busy traffic and rock hard punishing tarmac. It's head down and put one foot in front of the other kind of walking and you crave the soft embrace of grass. Anything, even a thin verge to separate the road from the pavement will do. Food and water breaks are welcome and even though our feet are screaming, the amazing scenery seems to numb the pain. So although we haven't made it to the southern tip of sky yet, we are very close. And here, <laughs> base camp number two. Oh, oh let's yeah. just hang on. Oh, I can't reach. <laughs> My hat got in the way. Anyway, we've got the van here, so we're very close. Just a couple more miles and we can get right down to the land's end. I think what we're gonna do is have a break here. Uh, probably ditch a bit of stuff, to be honest. We don't need our tents and sleeping bags now. We're done. And we should have a leisurely final couple of miles now that all the road walking is complete. Almost there. Almost there. Finally, the southern tip should be coming into view. <laughs> have it, the Ruahunish Peninsula to the Sleet Point Lighthouse. 99 miles, plus the mileage back to the van, so we're gonna say 100 plus. Six days, arduous terrain, pathless, no way markers for the majority of it. Hard road walking, hard bog slogging, fern bashing, but every minute was worth it because it was an adventure, it was a challenge. You know, I, the photography was fantastic because I took a different approach to all my other hiking photography trips. This time, I had the camera. I mean, look, I mean, man, come on. Big shout out to the bum bag. Having your camera accessible, when you, when you go hiking, you see things that are gone in an instant. So just having that flexibility to be able to just capture a single moment on your journey is fantastic. And I've got to say, doing it with someone else, Go on, Murray. <laughs> Go on in here. If you if you haven't already checked out Murray's channel, fantastic YouTube channel, Scotland's Mountains, um, makes all of my stuff look tiny in comparison. Don't but, about. Thank you very much. I'll take that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't talking about the hiking. All right. <laughs> um, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, what? Uh, incredible. Um, I mean, to get it, to do it the way we've done it, top to tail 
taking in all the different landscapes, the variety of landscapes, but to get it in the weather. I know at the start it was a bit, well, it was very, very windy, and then we had midge fest days, but we have had high pressure. Oh, we've had the weather for it. Unbelievable. Yeah. It can rain for 40 days and 40 nights in this part of the world, so for, for us to get this weather has been spectacular. Mm. We've locked out. Spoilt run. And yeah, I, I have a question. Why? Why did we do the extra bit to, to this point? Sleet of Point Lighthouse. Why not just do the the official Sky Trail, which takes you to uh, Broadford? Well, it, it just it completes it really, doesn't it? I mean, Broadford's I so. still a third of the way. You're, you're only a third of the way down the island, and I know a lot of people will concentrate on the the honeypot areas, the Coolins, the Trotter, nice old man store, mm, Coolin, mm. but this part has its own beauty. Oh, and, and even though we yeah. had the, the the tarmac walk there coming down, the views over to the mainland, some of the most impressive. Mountains and landscapes on the mainland is northwest Scotland. Some of, yeah, some of the best views are coming down that road over to the mainland, and you you wouldn't Sunny. get that if you didn't do the extra leg. My advice, maybe if you wanted to do this, leave a bike yeah. um, <laughs> at the at the top of the peninsula and cycle the last eighteen miles rather than road walk it. I don't know, but we, we had a fantastic time. I'm done. I'm out, and uh, I'm very happy to have completed Sky, top to tail. Been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. We'll never do this again. No. <laughs> Not in this weather. Not in this weather. Yeah, but yeah, it's been what a journey. What a journey indeed. A hundred miles walked on arguably one of the most beautiful islands in the world. This was a truly eye-opening experience for me as a photographer, as I've learned that gear always comes second to the environment you're shooting in. And images are everywhere, all of the time, but only as potential. It's up to us, the photographer, who must see that potential and capture it, whether on film with a tripod or handheld with a crop sensor. One final image to mark the occasion. I was dreading the two mile walk back to the van, but as luck would have it, we met Ewan, a friendly local who offered us a ride back on his quad bike and was kind enough to fly his drone to help capture the final moments of our journey. It would be a massive favor for me if you can give this guy a follow on Instagram. He was a true gentleman. There will be a link in the description below. So I hope you guys have enjoyed the last couple of videos. Uh, I just want to say thank you for watching them and I want to say thank you to the sponsor of this video as well, which is Squarespace. So if you need a website, maybe you too are a long distance hiker or enjoy blogging, writing and taking photos of your own experiences in the outdoors and you want a nice shiny website with a gallery and perhaps a, uh, a contact page or even an online store. They can do it all, all of it through Squarespace. You can log your own domain and they've got 24 hour or 24 seven customer service. So if you get stuck, you can just give them a call and it's a simple drag and drop service. So if your mind boggles at how to make a website, traditionally using code and all that kind of stuff, you don't need to worry about any of that. You just log on and you use their templates and you drag and drop and you make a beautiful looking website. It is, and I wouldn't say this if it wasn't, it's idiot proof. And I know because I've made a couple of websites myself and they look great and it all works and it's just simple. So if you fancy a website, Go to squarespace.com forward slash Heaton and give it a free try. And if you like that free trial, use the offer code Heaton and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. All right, <laughs> long walk back to the van. I'm hungry and uh, I'm just about done with filming. So until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Whew. Bye for now.